after reuniting with Sirius. He accurately predicted the status quo of the outpost. The outpost was captured without sending back the request for help. The conversation here also foreshadowed the abnormalities of the outpost later. Arrive at the outpost. It was Shirley who first discovered the gray space entity. Many people wonder if the protagonist and his party have forgotten to look for Zeke. Actually, it's not. The reason why Shirley is actively involved in various tasks. Go to all areas to solve the problem. In addition to exercising herself and enriching her knowledge. Just to find her brother. Only the area she explored is big enough. It's possible to meet Zeke. When she first arrived at Vera, there has been speculation about the whereabouts of Zeke. Maybe trapped in some abyss field. After that, Shirley paid special attention to the gray space entity. I don't know if the protagonist wants to find Zeke. But Shirley is determined to find her brother. It is worth mentioning that the staircase in formal version is normal. It seems that the test version is rather rough. When we got to the outpost and opened the door, we can see Umi and Grace's entity. When we hadn't opened the door, what kind of situation is it inside? Some time ago, base station defense force field is turned off and was attacked. The force field is turned off remotely. Then the outpost should have been attacked first. From the news of the Hive Mother to the time we arrived at the outpost, it's only been half a day. Why do I care so much about time? Because of the situation in the safe house. There are already a lot of eggs and vines. If this all happened in a period of time, it shows that the egg laying speed of gray space entity is terrible. But if it is measured by laying eggs as time, you'll find that this can only be done if outpost is attacked for a long time. This contradicts the current information. This proves the production process of gray space entity is much faster than expected. The moment we opened the door, we saw Umi is being beaten. It's the same as acting in a TV show. It all depends on acting skills. Pay attention to Umi's pupils at the moment. There is a strange light. It means that she is in the state after being possessed. It's a pity that the protagonist didn't see. The people behind are also late. Otherwise, they'll all notice. But Lin soon began to suspect her. Jormungand underestimated the executor's working rules. Her made-up reason does not pass. The first way to deal with an attack is to report. Instead of dealing with it privately. So how to make up a good reason? Listen to Umi. Umi, do you remember what just happened? Oh. I... I remember I was practicing just now. Practice? Oh, no, I'm on patrol. Yeah. Patrol. Lin asked where the others are. Jormungand made a mistake again. Shirley found the gray space entity reaction below. At this time, Umi has lost Lin's trust. The safe house was found. You can see that there are already a lot of eggs here. There's even some vegetation. I'm a little curious that the producer copied the material and didn't notice it. Or are there plants associated with egg laying by gray space entity? It's not going to grow grass in a safe house, is it? As previously speculated. Suppose the incident started with the hive mother eavesdropping meeting. The arrangement here is too inconsistent. The feeling of a safe house has taken several days to develop like this. But judging from the plot, it takes only half a day for everything to happen. The base station must have been destroyed that day. Or Icarus won't be able to come back through Space Rift. The only uncertainty is the occupation time of the outpost. Judging from the safe house, time seems to have passed a few days. That means that after the occupation, the gray space entity is still maintaining the operation of the channel. This is obviously unreasonable. So the only possibility is what we see. It was really caused by half a day. There's no need to marvel at the reproduction speed of the gray space entity in the future. The speed of building nests is ridiculously fast. The staff inside were all wrapped up. Look, it looks like an egg, too. But there is no such energy in the test version. So I wonder what the game Ophicle are trying to say. Is the gray space entity of the safe house transformed by human beings? But if that's the case, the ritual ground is meaningless. And the transformation of Rebilia is human form at least. Here people directly become an enlightener? So I prefer the second possibility. It's just a simple prison. After the staff were rescued, they are just in a coma. Why would the gray space entity let them alive? The reason I can think of is to get the information. Just like torturing a prisoner. The gray space entity can obtain information through dreams. Why a dream? Because people associated with Abyss like to dream. This also explains why Umi can operate the outpost system. Obviously, the staff didn't teach her that. She got it in a special way. It can be seen that Abyss is also wise. They can make progress through learning. Jormungand was surprised that Shirley could explore the gray space entity. She didn't expect this. After all, for the gray space entity, they are afraid to be seen through the camouflage. But Shirley didn't find her. Then Lin used a trick. The system of the outpost has permission setting. And the executor does not have the permission to operate. But Lin let Umi do it. And Umi did it. It means she already has access. Or she knows the key. And have operated the system more than once. At this point, the answer is already obvious. Umi had something to do with the attack. At night, the outpost and the base station were attacked at the same time. It also confirmed that this really happened in half a day. The aim is to sever the link between Maroria and Inars. It also proves that the Hive Mother eavesdropped on the meeting. But it's scary to think about it this way. Why would she know all this? After learning that the protagonist and his party are going to Inars, she didn't send someone to attack the team, but directly cut off the passage. It shows that the Hive Mother is already familiar with these technologies in the human world. Even the base station is a relay station. The outpost controls the defensive force field. She all know that. It can be seen to what extent the infiltration of the Gray Space Entity has reached. If it is not the Gray Space Entity rushed to rescue the Hive Mother, maybe the Maroria fell a long time ago. But it also makes me curious. Why was the Hive Mother not in a hurry to attack Inars before? But has been attacking Maroria? 
The only variable that happens in between is Zeke, whose whereabouts are unknown. Is Zeke carrying some secret? Led by Umi, we came to the swamp. The ecological environment of the swamp is a little outrageous. In this ecological cycle, the biggest benefit is the Grayspace entity. This makes me wonder why the Grayspace entity attacked the Ecological Research Institute. Is it to establish a suitable environment for Gray Space Entity to live in? Umi proposed to split up. Let's take a look at the distribution of personnel. Sirius and Lin are in charge of the left and right base stations respectively. And the protagonist, Nemesis and Umi go to the farthest base stations. This is just right for breaking down one by one. Pay attention to the little eyes of the two at the moment. In the future, as long as you see this in the plot. It means there's a secret in the plot. Then I crawled in this place for nearly 10 minutes. Why? I'm looking for a way down the hill. This is where I am dissatisfied with this map. Many lines are cut off in this swamp. To put it simply, it can't be reached by vehicle. As high, no matter how complex the map environment is, in an area that people can reach, there is a way for vehicles to move. But you can't do that on a swamp map. I can't help but sympathize with the staff here. Does it mean climbing and flying with all kinds of relics to go to work every day? Things like roads. Players don't have to walk. But a map can't lack. Or it destroys the sense of immersion. I also hope that the game Opical will pay attention to this point in the future production. First, you have to let the player know. How do people live in this world? So that the world can be real. There is also a dead end in Mororia. It's all something they should try to avoid. The world should be real enough. These details are essential. In the end, we can only choose to jump off a cliff to complete the task. Silk traps began to appear on the road. Needless to say, this must be Jormungan's masterpiece. Through the trap area. As long as you pass enough high, you'll be fine. Finally arrived at the third base station. This place has been attacked. According to the records, Umi has been on duty here for a long time. Should pay attention to the description of the record of the last day here. Arrange for four mechanical guards to accompany them. We can also find four bodies here. But there are only three bodies in base station one. Where's the last mechanical guard? Notice the blue screen here. The order is out of order. Why would someone do that? I'll talk about it later. But one thing's for sure. This is a puzzle. Each hexagon is a jigsaw puzzle. Interested friends can have a try. The signal transmitter status of the number three base station is seriously damaged. When we go out, the silk trap appeared again. It didn't show up at the second base station. It also shows that the trap is indeed Jormungand. I learned from Sirius that the defense force field was closed remotely. Now if you jump to the top of the base station, you will find the antenna building above. It's already crooked. Looks like it's not just an internal attack. The outside has also been destroyed. Next, go to base station 2. We'll find out we're being followed. The shadow is a little stupid. It got stuck in the tree. The attack will penetrate directly. It can be seen that the Grayspace entity has been watching us closely. And the one who can do all this is the Hive Mother. The normal plot looks like this. So the trap here is not meaningless. But most people will be in a hurry to finish the task. They don't notice these little details. What's arranged here is a chase. To pave the way for subsequent attacks. It feels more like giving a report to Jormungand. Umi took the opportunity to run away. The battle here is kind of interesting. Silk Red can be wound around the body. But the effect is unclear. If it appears an instance, it is estimated to be a powerful debuff. Sirius had a showdown after the battle. This is a great place to collect samples of all kinds of plants. I don't know how many times I've been inside and out, and I know it very well. i just playing along with Umi. Come on. Oscar Osirius, a golden man. The transmitter of base station 2 is also completely damaged. Notice the screen here. It's no longer blue. It turned red. When I got outside, I found that the antenna on the top was also broken. Let's just ignore the plot. When I came to base station 1, I found that the antenna on the top was intact. The doubtful points of the first base station are as follows. First, the antenna on the top is good. Indicate what message it may have received. The second one. Four mechanical guards found only three. Which means one of them got out. Third. The transmitter here is turned off, not damaged. Who turned off the device here? The fourth, the display on the screen. I'm finally going to talk about the screen. If it's just a cursory look, it's a messy signal. But just keep an eye on it a little longer. You will find that there are words on it. In order to understand the content above, Xiaofeng found the help of the TOS scientists in the QQ group. Special thanks to M.O. Ming for his help. I've been bothering him for a lot of time recently. Also discussed a lot together. Our method is as follows. First of all, take a screenshot of the picture. And then divide it into 40 parts. What is the order? It depends on the blue screen of base station 3. The order of the blue screen is the order of the red screen. But I'm sorry. The plan failed. There is no way to get a regular hexagon through screenshot. The puzzle is too outrageous. So we switched to the second way. Directly analyze the information on the red screen. There are several words that can be read clearly. Evacuate, exercise, that is, strong, encounter, crew, suffer. Process, paralysis, paralysis, tightness. Clear, yes. Check. You can probably tell what it means. Encounter a strong enemy. Emergency evacuation. This jigsaw puzzle is outrageous. It's not just flickering. And it will be stacked together. There is still a lot of missing content. Speculate it has something to do with the attack on the base station. What's interesting is the source of this letter. This may be a letter for help from Inars. 
Does this scenario look familiar? The dialogue left at the end of the Puppet Singer incident become the starting point of the follow-up plot. Could it be the same here? The complete content will have to wait for the new plot. I'm guessing there was a distress call from Inars before the station was attacked. And explain in detail the content of the call for help. But we can also guess. Purify, purify what? Exercise. Who's doing the drill? Encounter a strong enemy. So where is the battle? Just take a look at the following clip. This will be the next plot of the main line. It can also correspond to a call for help. It depends on how the plot develops. Why is the screen here so messy? There are two guesses. The first one was messed up by the gray space entity. But instead of trying so hard, why not just destroy it? The second guess is that this is what the screen looks like. It is also a means of encryption. Only through correct interpretation can we know the information. But it's clear that the transmitter affects the reception problem. So it leads to further confusion of the information. If someone is interested, you can also spell it in the first way. First divide the blue screen into 40 pieces and put it together to find out the order. Then restore the red screen in order. Then it's time to see Umi. Pay attention to the details here. Shirley launched an attack. Jormungand subconsciously protected Umi's body. Dodge the attack. That's weird. Shouldn't use Umi directly as a meat shield in normal situation? Why did Jormungand protect Umi instead? Here we have to mention Umi's second personality. There is a high chance that Jormungand is still alive. The main variable here is what Umi did after he disappeared. Why did Lim and Shirley appear at the bottom of the pit? And for that, I imagined a lot of situations. For example, tracking the race face entity. Or encounter Umi being kidnapped. But they were all rejected. It's more likely that it's the same as what happened to us. I heard Umi shouting at the bottom of the pit. We arrived at almost the same time. But that creates a problem. Why did Jormungand lead us down? Does she have the confidence to kill us? Judging from the results, Jormungand obviously can't beat us. Except the protagonist. Meroria Ace Card Sirius. It's impossible that the Hive Mother doesn't know his strength. But she still chooses the ambush at the bottom of the pit. And there is no other Grayspace entity to assist. This is the result of inevitable defeat. That's a little unusual. Jormungan knows she can't beat us. Why did she choose to lure us here? Speculate that this is also a game. Jormungan had to fake his death to continue to lurk. That's why Umi's body is protected. Finally, there is the foreshadowing of the cry. The sound is obviously coming from inside the tunnel. Looks like there's something waiting for us inside the tunnel. Back to the Silver Coast Research Station. Lyra raised new concerns. This is not necessarily the first batch of parasitic race space entity. But why haven't we met before? If it had infiltrated before. Why are the Maroria still good now? It is speculated that this gray space entity does not belong to this side of the desert. Maybe it was sent by the Hive Mother at the bottom of the sea. If the gray space entity did fight the Adeans, there will be signs of them all over planet Ida. It was still a doomsday survival. Why is the Zerg crisis now? Icarus has arrived at the research station. It was a good time for him to come back. Just came back to pay a duty visit. When the space rift can be used. It's convenient. But is it really a coincidence that Icarus can't go back? He's the captain of the Mook squad. He just left. Then the Hive Mother cut off the space rift. It's possible to say the Hive Mother wait after he is leaving. And do something. Does the Hive Mother feel difficult about Icarus, too? Later, Icarus will also tell us that he has been tracking the Hive Mother. The strength of the Mook Squad Captain should not be underestimated. But if you think a little bit deeper, Icarus is not nervous about Inar's problems. On the contrary, he said Inar's to protect itself. Could all this be a cheat to Hive Mother? Icarus deliberately returned to the Maroria. Is to lure the Hive Mother into action. To find out where she is. He even prepared ahead of time for the Deep Sea Tunnel. Supposed for an abandoned tunnel. No one cares, right? Unless it was premeditated. How will the follow-up plot develop? Will Verbilia move with us? Will the hidden dangers in Umi be removed? The contest between the Mook Squad and the Hive Mother. Who would be better? What is the specific content of the distress letter received by the base station? Are there any survivors of Adeans? Everything will have to wait until the anniversary, Chinese version. Alright, that's all for this issue. It should be enjoyable. Follow Xiaopeng. Take you to experience.